Welcome to our lecture online. Here's our method number two, the method of elimination. And the way you work that is as follows. It says pick two pairs of two equations and eliminate the same variable. So you're going to do this twice. You need to take two of those equations together, eliminate one variable, take another two equations and eliminate the same variable, and then you end up with two equations and only two unknowns, and then you can solve that. So what we're going to do is first we're going to take equation number one and number three together because notice if I take equation number one and then I add to that the negative of equation number three then the z will cancel out. So our first attempt will be to get rid of the z and we'll do that as follows. We take x minus y plus 4z equals 9 and then we multiply this equation both sides by negative 1 that gives us a minus 3x a minus 7y, a minus 4z equals a positive 1. And then when we add those together, notice the z's will drop out. So that gives us a minus 2x, a minus 8y equals 10. And there's our first equation that does not have the variable z. So now we need to take another set of two equations. It doesn't really matter which ones we take, so how about if we take equation 1 and 2? But what I need to do here is I need to multiply equation number 1 by, let's see, by 3 and equation number 2 by 2. And the reason why I do that is I want again to eliminate z. So let me do that over here. So we have x minus y plus 4z is equal to 9. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the left side by 3 and I'm going to multiply the right side by 3. And then I'm also going to take equation number 2 and I take 5x plus 3y minus 6z is equal to 3 and I'm going to take that equation and multiply the left side and the right side by 2. So you may wonder well why did I do that? Well it turns out 3 times plus 4z is 12z 2 times negative 6z is negative 12z. If I then add those two together, the z's are eliminated again. So let's try that. So here we get 3x minus 3y plus 12z is equal to 27. So there's the first of the two equations. And then here we get 10x plus 6y minus 12z is equal to 6. And there's the second equation. Now when I add those two together, the z will be eliminated. So I'll come over here and do that. So we end up with 3x minus 3y plus 12z is equal to 27. And then the second equation, we get 10x plus 6y minus 12z is equal to 6. And now we can go ahead and add those two together. Z will drop out again. So here we end up with 13x plus 3y is equal to 33. And there's my second equation. So now I take this equation right here. I take this equation right there. There are two equations, two unknowns, no variable z. I can then solve those equations simultaneously. So let's do that. We have 13x plus 3y is equal to 33. There we have minus 2x minus 8y is equal to 10. So again, we can use the method of elimination. We could also use the method of substitution here, either one. But let's try again the method of elimination. Notice we have a plus 3y and a minus 8y. So if I multiply the top equation by 8 and the bottom equation by 3, I then end up with something where the y's will be eliminated. So that's what we're going to do next. So use a different color. We're going to multiply this equation, both sides, by 8. And we're going to multiply this equation, both sides, by 3. And remember, when we multiply both sides of the equation with the same number, nothing changes. Okay, 8 times 13, that's 80 plus 24, that's 104x. Plus 24y is equal to, uh, that would be... Uh, 3 times 8 is 24, that's 240, plus 24, that's 264, 240, 264, and here we get minus 6x minus 24y is equal to 30. 
And now we'll go ahead and add those two equations together. Notice that the y's drop out. We end up with 98x is equal to 294. Now we can divide both sides by 98. Eight. And we're going to put x is equal to, this goes into here exactly three times. So there we have our first variable, x. Now to get the other variable, y, we take either one of these two equations and we solve that one for y. Mm, let's see here, which one do I like better? I always like to grab the equation with the smallest numbers, of course. So let's go ahead and grab this equation right here. We'll continue over here. We end up with minus 2x, I want to rewrite the equation, minus 8y is equal to 10. And now we're going to replace x by what x is equal to, it's equal to 3. So minus 2 times 3 minus 8y is equal to 10. So we end up with minus 6 minus 8y is equal to 10. Move the minus 6 over here, I get plus 6. So minus 8y equals 10 plus 6 or minus 8y is equal to 16, divide both sides by negative 8, and I get y is equal to negative 2. And there's the second of the two variables. Now, of course, all we need to do is grab one of our equations, like maybe this one right here, and plug in the values for x and y to calculate what z is equal to. So let's repeat that equation. x minus y plus 4z is equal to 9. y is negative 2 x is equal to 3, so we end up with 3 minus a minus 2 plus 4z is equal to 9. So this gives me a 3 plus 2 plus 4z is equal to 9, or 4z is equal to, that's 5, so 9 minus 5. So we get 4z is equal to 4, and that means that z is equal to 1. And there's the third equation, I mean the third variable. So we know that x equals 3, y equals negative 2, z equals 1 is the solution. That is the place where the, th the three planes, because they represent planes in three-dimensional space, all come together to a single point. To make sure we did it correctly, we can then take z equals 1, y equals negative 2, and x equals 3, and plug that into another equation. Not the first one, because we use this one to come up with the third variable, z. So we can then take another equation, for example, this one right here, and plug everything into that equation to see if we did it correctly. So we're going to do a quick check. So we grab either one of the other two equations. Oh, let's grab the middle one. So we get 5x plus 3y minus 6z is equal to 3. And then we plug in the values x equals 3, y equals negative 2, z equals 1, to see if that is a valid equation. So 5 times x, and x is equal to 3. Plus 3 times y, which is negative 2, plus 6 times z, which is 1, equals 3. And of course, that's a question mark, because that's what we're trying to check to see if it's correct. So we end up with 15 minus 6 plus 6. Ooh, something is not right here. Ah, there's a mistake. I have a minus 6z, and that should also be a minus 6 times z, which is 1. Okay, now I was going to say it didn't work out, and I was pretty sure I did it correctly, but there was a mistake on my check. So 15 minus 6 minus 6 equals 3, question mark. That's minus 12, subtract from 15, 3 equals 3. And sure enough, I was pretty sure there were no other mistakes. So it does seem to work out, and that's how you check, just to make sure that the values you obtain for your variables are the exact val values, and that is how it's done. Do you have an issue where you plug into raw equation because you use that equation too much to solve the other variables? So that's, that's a good question. So should we be careful about which equations we grab? And that's, that is absolutely correct. So it says pick two pairs, and they have to be two different pairs of two equations. So the first thing we did was we picked equation number, uh, let's see here, uh, we picked the first equation and the third equation. So this was equation number one, and this was equation number three. So first we picked those two equations to eliminate z. Now we have to pick two other equations, another set. We can't pick one and three again. So what we did was here, 
we picked uh, x minus y plus 4z, so that was number one again, e equation one. Of course, now we can't take equation three. We now have to take another equation. This was equation two. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and so notice, two pairs of two equations, and they have to be a different pair. Otherwise, it does not work. It will not work otherwise. So once you do that, then you go ahead and eliminate z. Then you end up with two equations and two unknowns. You eliminate y, and then you solve for x. Now, when you plug that back in, you wonder, well, what equation should we plug that into? Well, first to get the second equation, y, uh, the second variable, y, you plug it into one of these two equations. It doesn't matter which one. So x equals 3 can either go into this equation or this equation. It doesn't matter to get y. Now, to find z, you take the values for x and y and plug it into any one of the three equations. It doesn't matter. So we pick the top one. We could pick the middle one. We could pick the bottom one. It really doesn't matter at that point. Uh, but then to check, you want to make sure that if you picked equation number one to find the last variable, z, you can't pick the same equation to check your answers. You have to then pick one of the other two equations to check your answer. That's how that works. Good question.